In this video, I'm going to take you through a firewalls inflation system, an alternate use for it, and how you can build your own. Now, if you're not already familiar with what a firewalls inflation system is and what it's used for, basically it's a coupling set, a male and female end cap that's been modified to allow you to fill either two and a half inch or three inch fire holes up with air for either ice rescue or swift water rescue operations. Now there's an alternate use for a fire holes inflation system and that's during firefighter survival training. Specifically when you're running firefighters through either a Mayday or SCBA confidence course. In this SCBA confidence training the holes line is flat and uncharged which takes away from the realism of the drill. The firefighter is unable to effectively follow the hose line as it bunches up and actually interferes with negotiating the obstacle. In this confidence course, the hose line is charged and now becomes a benefit, as it would be in real life, for the firefighter to use and effectively follow as they negotiate from one obstacle to the other. The setup that you see here is a commercially made system. Now to inflate fire holes that we would typically use in a firefighter survival course, we need a reducer. So you take that and you simply screw it onto the two and a half inch threads. tighten it down with a spanner and instead of using the end cap we would use a normal firefighting nozzle either a smooth bore or a fog nozzle to seal off the end. Breaking down the commercially made system here's your air inlet fitting. This line right here allows us to attach to an SCBA air sonar and fill the fire holes up with air. So you clip in, this gets connected to the SCBA air sonar and you inflate the fire holes up. What's nice about a commercially made system is you have this relief valve which is set to actuate at anywhere from 30 to 40 psi. As we all know, air compresses, water doesn't. So for a safety feature and so you don't over inflate the fire hose with air, you have the safety relief valve. Probably the biggest problem though with a commercially made system is the cost. You're looking for this setup alone about $350. I'm going to show you how you can put a system together for as little as 70. So here's what you're going to need to make your own setup. First of all, at least one inch and a half coupling cap and one inch and a half double male. Both of these, again, can be used on either inch and a half or inch and three quarter hose line. You're also going to need uh, an air chuck fitting. This is a quarter inch. The end that uh, is really critical is your connection fitting. You're going to want to make sure that this is compatible with your air or shoreline that connects to your fire apparatus off your compressor unit. Finally, you're going to need an, an air shutoff valve. And this is a, a quarter inch male to female air shutoff valve. You may also want one more coupling cap. Now, you would use this second coupling cap to seal off the end of your fire hose if your nozzle leaks. So, if you have a smooth bore or a fog nozzle that doesn't have a good seal on the ball check valve, you could use another coupling cap. These are the components for your system. To break it down, the coupling caps from a you know, fire service supplier, fire equipment store, you're looking at about $10 a piece for the coupling cap, around $11, $12 for the double male. The air chuck fitting, about $3. Uh, you can get at a hardware store. And the, uh, the air shutoff fitting, I got at Napa for $17. The tools that you're going to need to kind of put all this together, you're going to need a 7 16 inch drill bit, you know, a uh, high carbon bit that's going to go through metal. These are aluminum, okay? These are aluminum couplings. You're going to need a, a quarter inch tap. This is a 15 MPT. Uh, having a, a tap wrench is really nice. And then you're going to need some Teflon tape. All of these really, if you have a, a good maintenance division at your firehouse, should have these already. But if you don't, uh, you're going to be spending another $20 some dollars uh, just for this, these, uh, these tools to put everything together. So take one of your coupling caps and what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to grind down the nub, the post. Typically there's a chain on here. You want to get that flat with the face of the coupling. 
and you can you can do that on a grinding wheel get that nice and flat and then you're gonna to want to drill it out so that's what your 7 16 inch bit is used for is to drill that center hole out once you have the center hole drilled out that's where your tap comes into play and it's it's great to have a tap wrench but you could also just use a regular wrench but a uh, tap wrench is a little bit better balanced you're gonna put this in a vise get it nice and level and you're gonna start your tap and if you've never tapped out a hole before uh, it takes a little while you're gonna to want to use some machine oil you do a couple turns back it off do a couple more turns make sure that everything's nice and level back it off and it's gonna take you a while but eventually you're gonna get it all the way through the tap is tapered to create a better seal so you go down with your tap as far as you need to so that when you take your shutoff valve and you screw this in you have a you have a good seal so I'm just gonna screw this in you see how it's starting to get kinda tight right now that's about right where you want it because you're gonna tighten it down the rest of the way with uh, with a wrench and before you do that you're gonna add Teflon tape to the male threads and you're gonna add Teflon tape to the male threads of your air chuck fitting so when you look at everything together hand tight again there's no Teflon tape on this right now Teflon would be on both these fittings and you would have this again in a vise and you would tighten these down After you have both fittings screwed in place, another step that you can take is to add some epoxy to the inside of the coupling cap. This will help to seal off the threads and prevent any leaks. That's your holes inflation setup. You notice the big difference here is that you don't have a safety relief valve. So it's critical guys when you're actually using this in training that you throttle down your compressor, turn down your compressor so that it won't inflate the holes to more than, more than 40 psi. If you're unable to turn down your compressor when you fill the fire holes up with air, only inflate the holes enough so that it gets the, the, the normal shape to it. Once you obtain that shape, uh, go ahead and shut this off and disconnect your air or shoreline fitting. So you're using this setup off your, your fire apparatus air shorelines, okay? not, not the air bottle unless you make a fitting for that as well. So we'll show you how this all looks together and this would screw onto the holes onto the cap which would screw onto the holes and then this would go on the end of the fire holes or your, your uh, nozzle wood.
you saw, inflating the fire hose with air is very quick and very efficient, especially if you're working out of the fire hose. But keep in mind that this technique will also work well off-site, for instance, at an acquired structure. In that case, all you're going to need is a portable compressor. The big advantage here, guys, is that you're going to get the same shape, same feel of a charge hose line, minus obviously the water weight, without the hassle. You're not going to have to worry about securing a water source, and you're not going to have to worry about any cleanup. I do want to point out, though, the importance of not overinflating the fire hose with air. It's a safety issue. Again, you're not going to need anything higher than 30 or 40 psi. If you're unable to dial on your compressor or you don't know where you're at, one way to gauge that you're in that safety zone is being able to easily kink the hose. If you can do that, you're going to be fine. Another thing you may also want to consider during training is taping the bail of your nozzle shut. That way you don't have to worry about someone coming along, kicking it open, and losing all the air. And that's about it. Guys, the holes inflation couplings have worked really well for us. They've definitely added an element of realism to our training. As you saw, they're very cost effective, easy to make. So give them a shot. Try them out. See if you like them.